back in 2019. J.D. Vance. Will you commit to implementing a federal ban on fracking oh, your J.D. first Vance day in now office? Being grilled. In the United States, grilled. the countries who have banned this devastating uh, practice. The There's no question grilled. I'm in favor of banning mm. fracking. So, and Senator, how do you be uh, simultaneously for the Green New Deal and now for fracking? Mm -hmm. Well, you can't. Those are just totally inconsistent right. positions. Exactly. And I actually think that Kamala Harris may have told and ex It's very interesting. They're talking about Kamala Harris having a, a change in position on fracking, yet on um, freedom of choice and um, abortion. Uh, President Trump overnight totally changed his position. But obviously, J.D. Vance can't talk about that. She changed her mind on fracking during her general election debate. That's not true. She definitely did not do that. So I, I think that Kamala Harris got away with a very dishonest sort of you know, revision of a record mm -hmm. there. But but then let's go back just to how this affects the lives of, of American families and American workers. I'll tell you what affects the lives of American families and American workers is politicians not telling the truth. Uh, and J.D. Vance, by the way, I haven't seen him do a any level of sit-down interview where he's been properly cross-examined and not come out feeling and just looking a total clown. Uh, it doesn't matter how many times he appears on Fox News, and sorry if you want to hear what he's got to say, but he's talking out of his backside. Uh, it's not going to change the fact that um, he's a bit FOS. Desperate to let her get away You're with desperate. This, that they don't even push her on the fact that she's changed her mind allegedly on eight different topics. And, and, and the final thing is the proof is in the pudding. Kamala Harris can say that she's changed her mind on him. Actually, the proof is in the pudding. Um, Tim Moore speaks in front of the fireman and bossman, gets a round of applause, big cheers. Uh, a few days later, this buffoon. Boo! She enact these policies now and make Americans better off. Right. I don't think she believes it, which is why you're not seeing it in what she's doing. And Dana Bash kind of asked about that. Hey, you've been vice president for three and a half years. Uh, last night, we know what she's doing uh, with these new positions. You see so how they uh, she constantly. is racing to the middle. They're almost forced giving him the answers. This is not a real cross examination. This is so lightweight. They're like they're fluffing SHIT, by the way. And obviously, she's fishing around for Republican votes as well because she was asked and she said that she would appoint a Republican to her cabinet. And we've seen that in the past. And it won't be you, JD. Mark Obama did it. Would a Trump Vance uh, administration, would you guys appoint a Democrat to your cabinet? Yes. Oh, of course we would, Stephen. We've actually got a lot of great Democratic support. Uh, we just got RFK, of course, Tulsi Gabbard, who endorsed the president in just the last couple of days. If, if you look at the Trump movement in 2024, it's actually. Tulsi Gabbard is just a plant, all right? I cannot believe this guy's had to go and say, Tulsi Gabbard is a Democrat. Would they appoint a Democrat? <sighs> yeah. <sighs> uh, and RFK, even his wife doesn't think much of Trump. ...own stuff in the United States of America. We agree that we should close down the border and stop the flow of illegal drugs and trafficking into our... Why don't they ask him about his love of sofas? I'm J.D. Vance and I love my sofa. S-O-F-A. To say that she stands for a totally different platform than what she ran on three years ago, but she's governed as a radical. She will govern further as a radical. And Donald Trump has the record. And you govern as a clown because you've said some very derogative things about Donald Trump. Yes, you. You, J.D. Vance. Donut. Good job. Kamala Harris did a bad one. Well, Senator, we've been following what's been happening at the border, and now it's here here at home. Chicago's, the Venezuelan gangs, and the United boom, States gangs are going boom, back and forth. Boom, you got Colorado boom, now, where we boom, have apparently boom. some illegal migrants that have taken over an apartment complex. We had the councilwoman on from that area. This is what she said. Who knows what? You know what? I really don't watch enough of Fox for that. I have no idea what they're talking about. Um, but supposedly J.D. Vance is talking about reacting to uh, Kamala Harris's interview on CNN, but it's back to their... They have one subject that they obsessed on, uh, the border, which there was a bipartisan um, uh, bill to try and sort it out. Guess who? <laughs> Time's up. Uh, yes, Don Shitsy Pants himself stopped it, all right? Absolutely stopped it, because you take the border away, he doesn't really have anything. And wasn't his last administration? Build the wall. How did that go? Oh, back to Vance. Deported because it's a sanctuary state. 
What does a Trump Vance administration do differently? Oh, from the last time you're in power or now? First of all, we end sanctuary cities and we end sanctuary states. If you've got illegal immigrants in your communities, they need to go home and you need to cut co- What I love is they will find the most ridiculous uh, footage they can, run it through, regardless of whether it's connected or whatever. It is just fear, doom, gloom. Don't go outside. Oh, my days. Don't go outside if foxes are... Ah! <sighs> Because Kamala Harris has allowed us to import the business of the drug cartels into yes. our own communities. And Americans are suffering because of it. We cannot overstate this. Oh. Uh, I was talking to a national firefighter. JD is not suffering, by the way. It's all, why have they always got the story? My friend, I spoke to somebody. It's always, they've been briefed on what to say beforehand. Right? I don't think he believes any of the garbage he comes out with, but it's just like, right, make sure you say this. You've got 10 minutes in your Fox interview. Say this and say that. Okay. Providers, more municipal services, but these local governments are being totally destroyed because they're paying for Kamala Harris's open border. But Senator, we real do quick, so much better. Real quick, oh, that was common common sense sense. I, I know we only got a little bit at a time, but I, I'm curious. Yeah. The sanctuary city, sanctuary state, if Trump Vance administration is there, does that mean? I can't take this guy seriously it's for the simple reason his trousers stop at his ankles and he always wears bad uh, fitting shoes. And it's so funny. Uh, he was speaking to speaking to Sec- Transport Secretary uh, Pete Buttigieg uh, at the recent uh, DNC conference. And he had a totally different accent on, by the way. It was all like, yeah, I got you. I got you. Not how he speaks at all on the sofa. Uh, you could say he's FRS. I just called him fake. Hi, Larry. Where he said he's, it's making our communities poorer and less safe. Senator, yesterday, former President Trump announced that he wants to make IVF treatments free if he becomes a president. So you're talking here to a mom of nine kids. So I obviously believe more babies are better. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I, I actually was kind of a little bit taken aback because last week you were talking about, you know, Get him making Americans choice. healthy. We clearly have a fertility problem. Something is going on in our country because infertility is exploding and there's something whether it's in the food in the oh, environment um, it could scary. be cultural as well that we're encouraging girls to start having women to have babies a lot later um i've talked to a lot of pro-life friends we get a question and saying, it's one thing to say i'm not going to ban ivf it's an entirely other thing to say we're going to man we're going to pay for it or we're going to mandate insurance companies to pay for it and a lot of them said that that smacked to them to ask a like question. obamacare mandating you know contraceptive mandates so what's your response particularly to the pro life community which has been so supportive of this ticket and the advances that Donald Trump has clearly made in that area okay yeah, well, well, first of all, you, you know I'm pro-life and I want to save as many babies as possible. I, I, think it's, I think it's important for us to recognize that there are a lot of fertility problems and we ought to be talking about the root causes. But President Trump has always been pro-fertility treatment to address some of the problems, too, that, that, that young women are facing. I mean, you know this, I know this. We've all had family and friends that have gone through infertility yeah. problems. It is a night. Is he going to answer the question? She takes two minutes and he takes half a year. Hmm. Hmm. Anybody to do something that is against their conscience, but we also want to make this fertility stuff available to as many people as possible because babies are good. And for a whole host of complicated reasons, we've got a lot of women and a lot of young families that are struggling with this. We, of course, want them to have happier, healthier lives, and we want American women to have as big a families as they would like to have. And unfortunately, we know that's not happening right now. What do you say, Senator, to those in the pro-life community, some now that are so angered that they're saying some of them may stay home? Why is that a bad idea? Well, it's a bad idea, first of all, because all the president has said is he wants abortion to be made at this policy to be made at the state level, right? He wants California, Florida, Ohio, uh, right now, JD is trying to dig a hole and uh, make sure he doesn't fall in it too uh, much. She's, she's got nine kids, by the way. Nine. Wow. Genius in President Trump's approach here is that he's actually giving the individual voting populations the room to figure this stuff out. You guys know. Uh, I would say he's uh, just getting rid of all of his principles to try and make sure that he gets as many votes as possible. Well play. Persuading our fellow citizens. I but agree. even if you disagree w- with something that Donald Trump has said, look, Kamala Harris wants to force Christian hospitals to perform abortions. She wants. So we literally didn't answer the question. We get back onto the subject of Kamala Harris and just. Uh, has he got eyeliner on? 
What is that, JD? The candidate in the race. Well, we know you're running for vice president. He's running for president. You guys are very busy. Senator, thank you very Thanks, much Senator. for spending about 20 minutes Woo! with us. Woo! 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 By the way, we did reach out to the uh, Harris campaign, invited them on. They have not called us back. We will Why? not hold our Why would they want to talk to you anyway? Uh, right. Meanwhile, afraid to send their kids to school. Parents nervous after a group of migrants tried. There was a debate. You raised your hand when asked whether or not uh, the border should be decriminalized. Do you still believe that? I believe there should be consequence. We have laws that have to be followed and enforced that address and deal with people who cross our border illegally, and there should be consequences. I would enforce our laws as president going forward. I recognize the problem. I mean, how do you explain that, her reconciling the position she took running in a Democratic primary to now as a general election candidate? Well, she's pretty clear. I mean, she says there should be consequences and people should not cross the border illegally. I mean, she says that in the answer, she uses the word illegal. So if we're going to start parsing, you know, what did she mean by this word and that word? She used the word illegal in the answer. She also, uh, we didn't uh, play it here, but in, in, as in part of this answer, she talked about, uh, you know, being attorney general in a border state, enforcing laws in a border state. She went back to her own experience, which predated her time in 2019. So, uh, and then she also used this answer to pivot to, uh, you know, to Donald Trump wrecking the bipartisan, uh, you know, border security bill. And she really actually sort of went to a forward looking, I thought more offensive frame on what she would do as president and the responsibility that she believes that Donald Trump and the Republicans uh, have for, uh, for destroying the chances at getting that bill done. So, uh, you know, I, I thought she actually navigated this quite well. Uh, she was she went back to an answer that was rooted in her time in public service, uh, and she made very clear that she believes there should be consequences. And you know, I think that was a I think that was a strong answer. Well, beyond well, just beyond the parsing of this particular answer, the fact is that when she was running four years ago, and Kate will remember this is working for Joe Biden then, she was not introducing herself as a border state prosecutor that took on multinational gangs. Like even if you think that her position is good now, the fact is that her pitch to voters is very different than it was five years ago. It, and, and no question, but I think the other way she tackled that across the board in answering these questions in this interview was to say, you know, and I've spent four years in the White House learning how to get things done. And so I thought that's the other piece of her answer on the, on the values thing that we haven't talked about yet. She said, you know, my values haven't changed. Mm -hmm. But I have learned how to get things done. And I've learned about finding consensus and that you have to be able to, uh, you know, to get things done to move forward. And so that, you know, that is the important kind of second piece here that lets her say, you know, yeah, I am a different candidate than I was in 2019 because I've spent four years in the White House getting things done. I think she had, if she's going to own what the Biden record of getting things done on the border, I think Republicans are going to be ecstatic about that. And when she goes back to her experience as AG, that's memory holing the last four years. It's a big case of amnesia where she had, it was given a prominent role in stopping illegal crossings at the border. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's going to fly. And I think the longer that this race dwells on immigration and border enforcement, the worse it is for Kamala Harris. And, and but cross, it's important to note, I mean, she was responsible for migration from the Northern Triangle. Crossings are down from those countries in the Northern Triangle since she took that portfolio on. So but, if we're going to talk about the numbers, then we should, but, to be fair to her, we should talk about the but, numbers but as this they is the thing. This is the thing where Washington's disconnect with America, I think, is really stark. For Americans, it's, is the border closed and are people still coming across illegally? That's the question. And and this administration's record on that's terrible, and it started on their first day when they reversed Donald Trump's immigration yeah, policies. We're going to talk more about that later. Do you want to quick? quick uh, I just, well, I just in in the wake of the executive order being implemented, uh, numbers are down, and you cannot argue that Republicans have been acting in good faith on trying to find solutions here in an election year. So if we're going to be if we're going to be talking about immigration as a political issue, Republicans have to own, and Donald Trump has to own his part in ensuring that Congress didn't take any meaningful steps to fix the problem. One thing is clear, Trump is still leading, though, on immigration. We'll see if she's able to close that margin and how much it impacts voters come November. We're going to talk. Um, I was a little bit surprised. People might be surprised to hear that you have never interacted with him, met him face to face. Mm -hmm. That's going to change soon. But what I want to ask you about is what he said last month. He suggested that you happened to turn black recently for political purposes, mm -hmm. questioning a core part of your identity. Yeah. Any same old tired playbook? Yeah. Next question, please. Yeah. <laughs> That's it? That's it. Okay. Um, let's talk about the governor. Uh, a moment that you shared that the 
world shared with your son, Gus. You were speaking, the camera caught him. So incredibly proud of you, so emotional, saying, that's my dad. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know as a father I could have ever imagined that. I, I'm grateful for so many reasons to be on this ticket, but that moment, um, to understand what was really important, to, to have my son uh, feel a sense of pride in me, that I was trying to do the right thing. And uh, it was, um, you know, you try and protect your kids, you know, it brings, it brings notoriety and things, but it was just such a, uh, a visceral, emotional moment that I'm, I'm just, I'm grateful I got to experience it, and I'm, uh, I'm so proud of him. I'm proud of him, I'm proud of Hope, I'm proud of Gwen. She's a wonderful mother, and these are great kids. And I think the one thing is talking about the era we're in is our, our politics can be better, it can be different. We can, we can show some of these things, and we can have families involved in this. And I, I hope that there was a, I hope people felt that out there, and I hope they hug their kids a little tighter, because you just never know, and life can be kind of hard. And last, a resident of, there's, an abortion-related amendment on yeah. the ballot to overturn the six-week ban in mm -hmm. Florida. How are you going to vote on that? Well, I think the six-week is too short. Uh, it has to be more time, and so that's, and I've told them that I want more weeks. So you'll vote in favor of the amendment? I'm, I'm voting that I am going to be voting that we need more than six weeks. Look, just out. The Wall Street Journal national poll has uh, Vice President Harris up one on uh, former President Trump, and the uh, Suffolk USA Today poll has Harris uh, nearly five points uh, post-DNC polling here. Uh, the Wall Street Journal matches some of our polling. Uh, that we've had in the Sun Belt and uh, Rust Belt states. Let's bring in our panel, syndicated radio host Hugh Hewitt, Amy Walter, publisher and editor-in-chief of the Cook Political Report, and New York Times opinion columnist Roth Douthat. Uh, thank you all for being here. Amy, I just want to get a sense of where you think this race is. You know, we get inundated with these polls, and right about this time, everybody starts to glaze over on, on numbers. Yeah. Um, I think what you could definitively say is that it's a very close race. I think that's a very good way to think about it. I think if you go back where we were, say, six or seven weeks ago, it was pretty clear that Trump Republicans had a decided edge in the presidential race and even trickling all the way down ballot because, quite simply, the Democratic base, those voters who uh, maybe they turned out for Joe Biden in 2020, vote for a Democrat, they just weren't enthusiastic. They didn't want to um, pull the lever for Biden or turn out to vote. That has been, that has changed tremendously uh, with Harris on the ticket. Threat to democracy, they are a threat to democracy. I'm not a threat to democracy. I'm not weird and I'm not weird. I mean, we're a lot of things, we're not weird, I will tell you. But that guy is weird.